Hey everyone, it's Word on Wednesday time. I'm so glad that you're able to join me today and I pray in Jesus' name that you're going to be blessed by God's magnificent Word. Uh, it's so brilliant to be able to dive into God's Word, isn't it? And to be able to get so much help and blessing uh, for our way every day in every way. All of that rhyming so magnificently. Uh, we're going to read Psalm 109. Our phrase day is Psalm 109. I'm really not fine. Psalm 109, I'm really not fine. A lot of times when people ask people how they're doing, a lot of times, invariably in Ireland, we will say, I'm fine, I'm fine, uh, when really we're not fine. And a lot of times, the fruit of our lips and the way we go on about stuff or about someone, it really betrays what's going on in our hearts. I'm going to read verses 21 to 31 today, and I know there's a previous 20 verses for you to enjoy at the beginning of Psalm 109. I'm going to read the latter part, verse 21 to 31. So here we go. But you, sovereign Lord, help me for your name's sake. Out of the goodness of your love, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I fade away like an evening shadow. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees give way from fasting. My body is thin and gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me according to your unfailing love. Let them know that it is your hand that you, Lord, have done it. While they curse me, you bless May those who attack me be put to shame, but may your servant rejoice. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace and wrapped in shame as in a cloak. With my mouth I will greatly extol the Lord. In the great throng of worshippers I will praise him. For he stands at the right hand of the needy to save their lives from those who would condemn them. Lord, thank you for this word. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. So for those of you who will have read or who will know this psalm or who will read after we've done this little Word on Wednesday piece, you, you will become familiar with the fact that the first 20 verses is like uh, a wish list of choice punishments that this guy, the psalmist, is hoping God pours out on a gentleman, someone who's been nasty, mean, has said bad stuff, has done cruel things. The list goes on and, 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 and there might be a sense of, wow, the person does sound quite evil and bad and they've been very, very nasty. But, but then the believer in God is like, you know, do this and do this to his family. And when you're at it, go at this as well and have a go here. And, and, and it's just it's just not great. It's just not a great way. But again, the Psalms are just full of the fragility of humanity and the way we go on as human beings. And we could know the Lord 2,500 years and still be hit with a moment where we have weakness and we're just giving off about something or someone and we're just having a go. Uh, and that's what happens in these first 20 verses of Psalm 109. But then in verse 21 to 22, we see a dawning reality. And we see the psalmist crying out and basically saying, help me, Lord. I know my heart is wounded. I have a wounded heart. A lot of times, a spew of negativity and aggression and bad thoughts coming out as words is evidence and fruit that our heart is not a good place, that our heart is wounded. And so from the overflow of our lips, the overflow of our hearts flows to our lips. Uh, and so we can see this very much uh, in this psalm and so I kind of I wonder myself reading this psalm you know did all the wrong things that the evil person perpetrated against the believer did this cause their heart to become wounded or in kind of the previous 20 verses the believer going you know get him do this do this to his family just finish him off after he's had, had a good rant does he go Oh Lord, my heart is in a bad place. Where is your heart at today? What condition is your heart in? 
Uh, has someone had a go? Are you upset at someone over something? Are you upset about something and you're taking out on someone? What's happening in your heart today? And I would just greatly challenge you that, you know, it's great for us to ask the Lord this question, Lord, search my heart and see if there's any offensive way in me. Is your heart wounded for whatever reason? Is it a cesspool of revenge and hurtful wrath? I pray it isn't, but it could be. And uh, if it is, it's okay to confess that to the Lord because he wants to give you a new heart and he wants to bless you and he wants to bring you into a new day. But if our heart is in a wounded condition, there's a few things that we can do that the psalmist does and I would encourage us to do. They're all ors because uh, the teacher in me, it has to come out every day. Uh, so the first one is reach out to the Lord. And so we see a couple of times in verses 21 to 31, the psalmist crying out, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. I've a wounded heart. I need your help. The second or is recognize your reality. Uh, that means be honest, be honest about your heart, be honest about your condition. The psalmist says, I'm poor and needy. I'm wounded, Lord. My heart is wounded. I feel gaunt. I feel thin. I'm in bad condition. He's, he's recognising his reality and that he needs the Lord. Thirdly, the third or is return to worship. Verse 30 says, with my mouth, I will greatly extol the Lord. In the throng of worshippers, I will praise him. A lot of times when people have wounded hearts, they stop worshipping God. They stop fellowshipping. They stop doing all the things that would actually bless and heal their heart. And they become even more wounded in their hearts. Uh, people who have been wounded by a believer can stop going to church when the Lord never wounded them. But anyway, they're going to take it out in the church because they want to have a go at the bride of Christ, even though Christ didn't do anything to them. Uh, and so it's so good for us to return to worship, to return to worshipping the Lord, to return to fellowship. Uh, and I pray that will be our testimony and the evidence of us being able to see that God is touching our hearts and our hearts are improving. And returning to worship is one of those evidences. And then lastly, remember your salvation. Uh, verse 31, he stands at the right hand of the needy, amen, to save their lives from those who would condemn them. Now, ultimately, the Lord has saved our lives and he saved our lives from every evil and every evil thing and every evil person, from all those who would condemn us, those uh, who just continually have a go, whatever it is. But, you know, when we recognise our great salvation, it gives us incredible grace towards those who even have fiery darts fired at us every day. And so I just want to bless you today. Uh, and I would encourage you to just let the Lord know that you're not really fine, Psalm 109, and that you would just reach out to the Lord, that you would be honest and recognise your reality, that you would return to worship and that you would remember your great salvation, which will give you the grace to be gracious to those, no matter how they're attacking you. So be blessed this day. We love you and uh, get into God's word. There's no better place. Be blessed in Jesus' name.